If you've tuned in to this tutorial, then you want to watch more of my creation of the rough draft. So welcome aboard. Let's go and take a look at what I've done so far. We left off with Alonzo and whether he uh, will allow Jake to be on his team. And that takes us to the next, to this summary of the challenges, right? So those summaries of the challenges we copied or I copied, and I pasted over here. And this again was that paragraph that explained that lessons were to be mastered before Alonzo would decide whether or not Jake belonged on his team. So I've put everything in here from that paragraph. Of course, it was messy because we changed to the pre or I changed to the present tense. Okay, so now and because the, the introduction of Jake to, to Roger is longer, we're going to just allow this to be a short paragraph. And what I want to do here is I want to highlight it, and then I'm going to move up here. I just do this in little sections, and I justify the margins. See that? All right. So from there, we went on to that paragraph that introduced Roger. And you can see there's all kinds of little goofy things in here that we have to fix. <clears throat> and Roger compares Jake's naivety to Alonzo's early days. This gap is wrong. So we have to go back up here <clears throat> and just backspace. See, this is all single space because it's an actual quote from the film. And so it's all neat and tidy, and it's little, you know, it's not all over the place. It's nice and neat and, neat and tidy. Okay. And you saw that all we needed was just this one short uh, excerpt to prove our point. Through Roger, Jake learns that Alonzo had once been in his shoes because of his assignment in this world. Oh, this is way long. Look at this long run-on sentence. Way too long. Let's fix it. Had once been in his shoes. Period. End of sentence. Because of his assignment, it is during that event later in the film, so I don't want the reader to lose their place, so I indicate that this is important information, but it happens later on in the film. Now see what happened here? We need to just move this picture around until that goes away there well that's fine that's fine you see what i'm doing and i don't want to i don't want to make him look blurred but there all right except it needs to go right here at the bottom mm. all right so I never get overwhelmed in this process because I can go back to the outline and find where I need to go next and I don't ever have to go through that discomfort of thinking where am I? Did I already say that? What's going on? I can already, I can easily find my place. So I'm going to go back over to the outline. That's where I left off. Right. Now that we we move on to prove that the world of the story is the actual antagonist and that Alonzo, therefore, is a protagonist, a hero who is on his quest, which is to find his next, uh, the next person for his team. Okay, so we're going to do this and we're going to paste it over there. We're going to start with this because I'm not going to take any of those Okay, back over here, and I'm going to start building this paragraph right here. When I do it this way, y'all, I never get confused. I always know where I just left off. This is a long thing, isn't it? We've got to break this paragraph up. We'll do it in the essay. Okay, so let's take this. Okay.
Okay, that paragraph is way too long. Can you see that? Before we even make it uh, double-spaced, you can see that it's way, way, way too long. Okay, but it does end in the hellscape of Echo Park. <clears throat> okay, let's go over to the rough. This is a great picture. It took me forever to find it, but it is a picture of the hellscape. Because when I mention the hellscape of Echo Park, I've got to provide a uh, picture for that. All right, so let's go over and look at this that we've got right now. First of all, let's just let's just select it before we mess with it, because all those highlights are going to mess with me. So I'm going to make it all times New Roman, 12 font, which is what it's going to be. In all right, now let's take a look at it. A number of critics analyze Alonso from the perspective of an antagonist who thwarts the progress of a naive younger officer by teaching the rookie the rules of the world of the Echo Park world. Okay, so this paragraph has to have everything to do with the rules. Okay. In that role, many critics claim that Alonso is the antagonist of the film. In his article, movie, story, buddy, picture, remember articles are in quotation marks. They're not in italics. Scott Myers describes Alonzo as a, quote, mentor turns agonist character that has the unpredictable scene-stealing badassness to give Hoyt his obstacles and conflict tests that grow into increasingly unethical and life-threatening situations. Okay, so that has to do with Alonzo in this world. Myers admits that Alonzo was once upon a time a well-intentioned police officer. I agree that a well-intended character would be in a protagonist position. Okay, this is the topic sentence of the next paragraph, right? Okay. Meyer suggests Alonzo changes into a cop on the take. Okay, that's going to use our, that'll be our transition sentence. And we're going to go ahead and start that next paragraph with what causes Alonzo to change. Remember, every sentence must be able to come out of context and make perfect sense. Okay, so this part, just this part, not till we get to here. I'm going to go up and double space this part, take out the highlights. Okay, double space, and I'll go just but one little section. I will justify the margins. Okay. See where my blah 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 and we have to do remove space after paragraph, move it up, nice. Okay. What causes Alonzo to change? I'm going to go ahead and leave it in there. The world of the story. Okay. Now, this paragraph then needs to talk about the world of the story and how Alonzo sees himself in that. Okay, on page 17 of the script. Alonzo presents his apprentice with a choice. Either learn the exciting and dangerous game, or you're going to be passing out baseballs. I'm going to do it. People would fault me for that because I made the, I just made the quote part of the answer to the completion of this, or this sentence. Be right back. Okay, that paragraph is complete. We just have to clean this up a little bit, and there we go. But we can't have the picture hanging out below the paragraph, so let's see. There we go. That was, yeah. I'm not sure if we could. Let's try to justify this margin and see if it just looks awful. It does. Off it does. All right. Now, ready for the next paragraph. 
Back we go to the outline. Okay. Okay, so this little paragraph uh, goes on to draw the conclusion from all that Myers article that when he says that uh, Alonzo was just a product of a bad world, that's exactly what I'm saying. Exactly what I'm saying. Because he's a hero who, but for the world of the story, would have been an upstanding police officer. Right? And that's why we say he's... And it's taken a little bit of time to prove that. Depending on what you've chosen for your essay, that will determine how much of this you have to actually prove before you go forward. Did I see where that came from? Okay, Myers. So I've quoted that article. All right, good. Good. Anyone? Anyone? Including Officer Hoyt, who refuses complete submission to Harris's personal plight of anarchy, will be sliding down a slippery slope, slope of serving justice. That's from Meyer's article. Yes, I say, Alonzo did fall down that slippery slope, but he had been presented with, had he been, but had he been presented with a better world, he might have dealt, developed into an honest detective. I hate to even mention this because I'm going to go Darwin, but <clears throat> okay. I'm going to put it in there, even though I I don't want to have to open up that can of worms. Sometimes you say something in an essay, and you think, "Well, that's perfect. That makes sense." And then the instructor comes back and says, did you prove that? Did you prove that? All right, but I'm going to leave it in there for right now. Okay, back to the outline. Let's see what's next. Okay, that's what we just did. So the outline lets me know where I left off. Okay, this is a new, it's a new paragraph with a new topic sentence. Successful in his job. Explains to Jane that he learned early on that a careless move is a death sentence in this world. Oh, world, world, world. Is there no other word I can use? I always keep the dictionary open so that I can find other words to use. Okay, so we are going, we're working on definition of the tragic hero. I don't want to get that. I don't want to deal with it. So that's going to copy. I'm going to copy this and put it over into the rough draft. There it is. And let's see if it's too long. Let's see if I can, if I can, let's try reading it. Using the Aristotelian definition of tragic hero makes a judgment error that inevitably leads to his own destruction. Alonzo fits this characteristic because he is on, he is his own worst enemy. He struts and huffs and puffs up in the hood and becomes so focused on his ego and power position that he ignores all warnings and makes a careless decision. When the character flaw makes itself evident and Alonzo scoffs, all, scoffs at all warnings, he fails. Eventually, the Aristotelian tragic hero dies a tragic death having fallen from great heights and having made an irreversible bad mistake, or irre irreversible mistake. Alonzo fits this definition because his good intentions twist into narcissistic greed. Didn't I just say that up here? He fits his characteristic because he's his own his worst enemy?
I think we can take that out. This is just the definition of a tragic hero. Let's just cut it. As an article in Psychology Today specifies, Alonzo had a competitive urge to prove himself the biggest winner of them all. If you can't beat him, join him. Okay. But the Psychology Today article isn't about him. Hold on just a second. Good. Okay. So let's fix that up though. We like the content. So we're going to go over here just like we were doing before. We're going to select all, make it Rock Times New Roman, 12 font, justify the paragraph, and make it double spaced. Lovely. Lovely. Okay. Back to the outline. What's next? <laughs> okay, we already did this. Now, we went off on the tangent of a dystopian world. That's all part of the logic of creating this world that is that intends to stop him at every turn. And so, that's what this dystopian situation is. And that's where that cool little picture went. Okay. Okay, if I'm going to say that this world is so bad, why is the world so bad? It's clearly not bad for everybody. People live there. So... This is why we have to have this little quick section where we, um, where I prove that the world of the story is ultimately evil because it's a dystopia. So I'm going to put this in the, okay, so so far we've proved that he's a uh, hero, that he's a protagonist, and now we're looking at him as a tragic hero. And, again, we're saying that the world of the story is what contributes to his problems. Okay, let's just fix it. Times New Roman, 12... Justify the margins. That margin's a mess. So, if I show the ruler when I have those little messes, I can click this little deal and move it over to the margin. Okay, there we go. Let's make it double spaced. We'll leave it in for right now, and we'll when we do the final draft, we'll decide whether or not we really need it. And we double space this. Except this has to change, so we're going to indent this and make this single spaced. Okay, it's in there, but I'm going to put a little question mark there and I'm going to highlight that because if I need to come back and change that to if I don't want it, I'll decide that later. Okay, back to the outline. More about this dystopian world. Let's look this over real quick. This is the last paragraph of that definition uh, section. 
And this is the one where we indicate the three parts of the essay. Um, which are the choices that he makes that are care careless, the punishment, and the audience's experience. Okay, and we with the the transition sentence is this one. Faces an echo there. Okay, let's go ahead and take it. We have we we'll have to take those little numbers out. Okay, so copy. Go over to the rough draft. Pop it in there. There it is. Okay, we don't want anything in bold. Just take that out. Lonzo's character develops tragically as he fails in his efforts to events fate. An example of Hoover's excessive pride and disrespect for the natural order of things. Alonzo is you know, projecting his royal image that he ignores the essentials. In addition, all of them make choices which bring about his destruction. Hamaria refers to a hero of the Zal, um, Aristotle, refers to a hero who decides on a course of action that causes him to be careless. Those choices lead to his demise. Yes, that's our number that's the faded protagonist of time runs longer can much spend the prevention to avoid usually occurring as a result of his hubris the audience witnesses this eternal drama by relating to the fate and stuff of all humans the audience experience catharsis for the inevitable downfall of the protagonist an understanding of alonzo as a tragic hero begins with an announcement Analysis of the challenges he faces in Echo Park. Love it. Let's copy that. Go back over to the rough draft. Okay. Times New Roman. 12. Double space. Justify the margins. Okay. That makes, after the introduction, that makes the definition section of the essay. Because I went out on a limb, because I chose an unpopular or not, whether it's unpopular or not, um, a, a position that needed to be proved by saying that the antagonist is actually the world of the story and not Alonzo takes a little bit of proving. You probably have chosen something that has a clear protagonist and a clear antagonist. And this is just to let you know what would happen if you were to come up with something that needed a little bit more proving than that. All right, now we're ready for the three parts of the essay, right? Okay, let's go back to the outline. That's already done. That shows us where we just were. Okay, Alonzo faces an epic struggle against fate. Okay, those are the two things that we have to prove. Yes, that this is an epic struggle and that it is fate. So those are the two things we prove in this section. And that's why he fails. Okay. So this is Alonzo faces an epic struggle. I think this part is kind of clever. Because epic heroes are always coming in on a white horse or, you know, let me show. This is the classic hero. Notice that the classic tragic hero comes in on a horse that is fully armored, and right? So how does Alonzo get around as his, as a tragic hero? I thought this was pretty clever. Okay, so from the Britannica article, I found the definition of epic. So now I have to make this sentence read better than it does. So, I don't need any of this. I'm just going to say Alonzo 
dominates as a powerful and warlike noble, constantly occupied with material, with martial activities, Let's just end it there. Occupied with with martial activities. This is still going to be part of the quote, but it didn't need to be that long. Okay. I'm going to have to have a quote that proves this one. Can you see that? Alonzo dominates a powerful and war as a powerful and warlike noble, constantly occupied with martial activities. That means like, you know, guns and conflict. Okay. Okay, I've got to find that that line in the film where he talks about or describes his own family. I know how to find it. Okay, so see this everlasting fame for himself and for his lineage. How are we going to prove that? I open up the script. And I just typed in, I thought I was going to find the one for it that where he says he has four sons. This is so much better. Nothing but judges have handed out 15,000 man years of incarceration based on my investigations. My record speaks for itself. How many felons have you called? That's really good. It shows how proud he is of himself and what he's leaving behind, which are all these prisons and so forth. I don't think I need that because I just need to prove that he thinks highly of his own record. So, one there. Paste it there. I'll deal with it in a minute. Okay. So that's it for that paragraph. This was all quoted, so I need a sentence that starts in my own words, then I have a proving statement there, then I need to add something after that, then I have this quote, and then I need a little sentence after that. I'll be right back. So I went to my friend the dictionary, and usually centered around a hero in which a series of great achievements or events is narrated in an elevated style. That's exactly what we have here, because the quote that I'm just getting ready to show says 5,000 people, how many prisons, all that kind of stuff. So, I'm not going to quote this. I'm just going to say it in my own words. Okay, so here's that paragraph. I added words in, remember the hamburger. I added this sentence in my own words. Then I have a quote from Britannica about the epic hero. Then I have Alonzo's own quote, and then I have a transition sentence to the visual detail that is included in the film to show how difficult that world is and the Alon that, that, that Alonzo must face and control. All right, this is a mess. It's as messy as it can be. Let's just not have that in our way. Let's get this. Okay, we're going to copy it. Let me go back over to the rough draft, paste it, okay, okay, so first we need to
Okay, take that. And remember this little doodad here? Take this back over to the margin. Ugh. Okay. Anzo's little speech right here. Okay, and then this goes back to the margin using this little doodad. And then the other side of it needs to go out this way. Okay, so this is my uh, definition of the epic uh, adventures. An epic quest takes the reader on a specific set of adventures the reader uh, that are grand in scope and described in an elevated style. Alonzo dominates as powerful and war as a war as a powerful and warlike noble, constantly occupied with martial activities. He seeks above all everlasting fame for himself and for his lineage. And this is the quote from the film. And then the film depicts Alonzo as a man with no equal. He rules the world and seeks to elevate his achievements in a braggadocious manner. Entering the Echo Park neighborhood is not for the faint of heart. Careful visual details are included to show the challenges Alonzo must face and control. Okay. All right. That wasn't easy. I had to fight with the uh, word over that one. Okay. Back over here. We know that picture is going to go somewhere. But let's go ahead and see what's next. I just said that. I already said all this. Okay, I'm just going to highlight it in gray. No, that'll confuse me later on. I'm just going to hide it. No, it's still going to confuse me. That's too bright. Okay. Okay. I, I just think it's repetitive. I've already proved all that. I proved that it's an epic struggle. And I proved that it's epic because it has to elevate itself to great heights. I proved that he did that. I don't think I need any of this. I already said it. Okay, so I'm just going to take this picture. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go over the rough draft. Can't mess with this, that made me. Where was the last picture? On the left or right? It was on the right. Let's put this one on the left. Okay. Okay. I'm going to put it there. Good. Okay. And I highlighted that because I just I just think it's repetitive. And when we when I go back and read the rough draft, I'll be able to see because I'm going to go start to finish. I'll be able to see if that has any place there. Okay. So this next point is the point about his carelessness. And that all has to do with this car, not his 
trusted steed with the car. Okay. A lot of stuff written about this. To survive, he dresses the part so he can command respect in the world. Because I just said, uh, it's not for the faint of heart. So how does he enter this world? He dresses the part. This is, okay. Okay. That's that. That just has to do with the wear that he has, that, that he wears in order to be, uh, actually, I'm going to change that. Hold on. Two point twelve. Get back over here to this margin. And we have to take out he because remember, every sentence should be able to stand alone and make perfect sense so that he can command respect in the world. The screenwriter. This isn't a play, it's a screenplay. Makes, okay, his intent clear in the following excerpt as well as the costume model image on the right. Okay, let's go get that costume image. I hope that border is not going to cause me problems. Let's go over here and just crop it. Sometimes those little white margins, they look like they're nothing until you try to put dialogue around them and then it's a mess. Okay. And it goes on the right. Script, page five. Good. Okay. Do we need to say anything about that? Or let's go back to the outline and see what... I just said before this that entering into this world is not for the faint of heart. And then the next thing is the... Uh, his steed. All right. We still have to have a transition sentence to this thing about the horse. Let me go over here and add a transition sentence. We can't end or start a paragraph with a quote or end it in a quote. So let me create a little um, transition sentence. Okay, so there's my little transition sentence. Um, that describes his look. And now we're going to move on and describe his car. And then we're going to show that his tragic flaw was that he did not protect himself when he went into battle. Okay, so there's, what do you think the reader wants to see in the next paragraph? Write a description of this car. Back over here. Here's the car. Okay. Copy over here and paste. Go back over here to the outline. Okay.
Okay, so this is a paragraph because from here we make the point. This is what he looked like. This was his trusty steed. This was his tragic flaw that he thought he was bigger than everybody else, so he did not protect the car with bulletproof windows. So that means that this needs to be a car by, I mean, a paragraph by itself. Right? All right, so that's that. And we're setting up our logic. Do you see that? Ugh. So annoying. Be right back. See how this looks. I, that one that we did above, I went ahead and lightened it up a little bit. Put that black frame around it. Um, this one needs that same thing. It needs the black frame. Why is it here again? Ugh. I need a different picture. Well, do should I put in the picture of the car when it's all shot to pieces? I'll go get one and you can help me make a decision. Okay, so the last, we've done the epic struggle, which is the car situation, and the fate is supposed to be next. That is not what's next, but it should be next. That was overwritten. Okay. This doesn't have anything to do with his fate, so it shouldn't be here. So I'm going to highlight it and I'm going to This is where he ignored the warnings. This isn't about where he is about fate. So let's just change that to green because it's going to go somewhere. It just doesn't go here. Okay, this ignores warning. Doesn't have anything to do with his fate. What has to do with his fate is this little section that I put down here, why I don't know. And this is what we need. Alonzo's constitution allowing to settle for a quiet desk job. In a number of places, he shows that he is swept up in a system that he did not want at first. When he is young, when he was young and eager to save the world. A turning point occurs in Alonzo's life and he no longer has the choice, the chance to choose that safe option. After dealing with two low-level crack addicts, Alonzo decides to let them go. Despite Jake's eagerness to book them, Alonzo reveals his fate. We're professional anglers, Alonzo explains to Jake. We reel in the big ones. Well, that's part of it. <clears throat> Let's take it out of here. We're going to copy it. And we're going to go back over to the rough draft. I did put that car in there because we go from this, I changed the image, we go some flashy car. You see that he's using the car as protection against him, whatever it is that he's doing. And then, because it's not bulletproof, that happened. Okay. So the last thing to prove in this section is the fate situation. So I'm going to pop that in here. Okay, so this is that paragraph. This is to define fate which is what was part of this deal. Okay, so I'm going to leave this here for tonight, and I'm going to pick it up tomorrow, because right now my brain has stopped working. I've got this where it's supposed to go. Obviously, when we deal with the fate of a tragic hero, we're going to need more than this to describe fate and to prove that he is fated. So it's not going to take much, but it's going to need just a little bit to make this paragraph work. So I'm going to shut it down and I'm going to save everything. And I will invite you to join me if you would like tomorrow. And we'll carry on. That concludes this tutorial.